Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and I am looking at Elite Dangerous Beta 2, and I'm also looking at a pirate called Tamzar who has decided that he wants to get my cargo, which is a shame because I don't actually have any cargo. I do, however, have a pair of pulse lasers generously on loan from the ship dealership, which I am using to punish this target and hopefully make some cash. He's down to 79% hull, and you see that I am using my strafe commands, my lateral and my vertical thrust to make sure that I can stay out of his line of sight while he tries to avoid my lasers. Yes, the AI is still... Well, it, you might still end up in a little bit of a turning match with these things, but if you're smart about your velocity, you can put yourself into a pretty robust position and show these hostiles how to do it. Yeah, so it's just a case of me combining my, my throttle and my lateral. I'm not using, like, decoupled. I'm not using um, the flight computer off mode because I think you get all the same level of controls, especially now where they've turned off the feature that lets you fly at boost speeds when you, are, uh, when, when you turn the flight computer off. Anyway, that didn't help that target. No cargo, unfortunately, which is fine. Okay, so I'm going to continue on to my target. I am in the Dahan system, and I'm heading towards Dahan 3 Metalworks, which is a new station. I'm sure you understand that there is a lot of new stations. Oh, yeah, i got to put my gear away. Stow my stuff before I start warping up. Okay, I can't unfortunately see whether I got bounty from that target. The bounties now appear on the left side and you have to cash them in at an appropriate station. You can't take bounties from killing, you know, Imperial ships and cash them in at the Federation stations. Uh, so yeah, look, there's, you can see visually there's quite a change. I mean, the interior of the spacecraft looks even darker than it was. And I think that's kind of to help the UI stand out a lot more. You can see a lot more refinements in the UI itself. The left and right panels, as you saw, had some subtle changes, but we're dropping out here. And uh, we're now going to drop out a lot closer to the target than we did before. It used to be you dropped out at 20 kilometers, now you drop out, out at about 8. Oh yeah, it looks like I have a couple of things to cash in. 850 and 1600, not a bad day's work. We are close enough that we can request docking, but this station is not like any station we have seen in the previous versions. As mentioned in many, many, uh, <laughs> in many public forums, they have now added these small outposts. Now, outposts are kind of modular constructions. They don't have the rotating... Uh, rotating docking bays that the larger stations have. These are entirely G zero G facilities. And uh, yeah, they are all kind of bolt together. They provide a minimally functional trading surface. And I think that is a docking bay right there in front of me. Yeah, look at that. It's pretty kind of cool to see this. This is something I could practically build in Kerbal Space Program. Look at all those shapes. Those are almost all standard parts, except for those spherical tanks. Oh, look, pad number one, and because the text is reversed, I guess that's the one that I'm going to put... Well, I guess i got to turn around. Okay, request docking. Request granted. Request granted. Now let's turn around. And there we are, docking bay one. So presumably because the text is facing the right way, I'm facing the correct direction. Off we go. Moving very carefully inwards here. Come on. There we go. Look at it. It's interesting how they have windows and doors as if there's gravity. I think that might need to change because there's no gravity here. Oh, wait. Pad loitering warning. Wrong pad. What a foolish part. I carefully looked for the landing pad and then they sent me to a different one just to troll me. Uh, just to troll people that aren't paying attention. There's number three. Where's number two? Is number two on the other side of number one? Of course it is. Ah, there, number two. That's where I need to go. Well, I just took a little bit of maneuvering there, but let's bring ourselves around. 
the spacecraft, I don't know, the, the maneuvering in 3D feels a little tighter than it was. I'm not sure if they've changed a great deal, but definitely now that you're not having to use, um, you know, free mode all the time to get places quickly, it feels a little less cheaty, let's say. <laughs> okay, come on. Ah, brilliant. Come on. I'm gonna move backwards, I think. Oh, no, I have to move forwards. Okay. Ah, uh, count me confused because I am apparently facing backwards on this landing pad, but let's tr see if I can land backwards. No, it's telling me I can't land backwards, so I'm going to have to yaw with all the speed and swiftness of a glacier. I wonder what the turn radius of a glacier is. Probably really, really large. Like there, we can look over there. Yes, yeah, some of these props are definitely designed for the interior of the stations, and I can totally understand why they've used them, but I won't be surprised if they modify some of these. Having ramps and things like that don't make sense when you have no gravity. Okay, so at these outposts we have a station services menu, and we have a lot of the functionality there. Now, this is of course completely redesigned, but we can refuel and... Nope, we can't repair. So you see, we have all these buttons in the middle that let us do the refueling and refit repairs, but apparently that didn't work. Repair menu does in fact work, so that is a good sign. And we can go to our contacts, the local, yeah, local security office, and redeem our bounty voucher, bringing us up to 29,000 credits. Which is more than enough for me to buy an eagle if I want to, but I can't buy them here because there's no shipyard. The ship prices have been all adjusted and there is a new spacecraft in the form of the Asp Explorer. But actually right now let's take a serious look at the updated UI in the stations. So first of all, every station now has Galnet News. We have a major update to Starport Systems makes Galnet available to all pilots. Basically we have news in all sorts of locations, tells us about the history of the Iranian uh, conflict, the Iranian civil war reaching stalemate. You can, you know, you can uh, read all this stuff, and of course some of these you can participate in. You can bring medicines or combat stabilizers to support whatever side you like, and that's of course one of those universe-shaping uh, news things that's going on. Uh, Dahan Bounty Hunter report. Bounty Hunters claim total credits earned. Good work, Commanders. It's all zero. Actually, I just claimed a couple, so maybe that'll change. Dahan Cl Crime report. Uh, yep. Yep, lots of zeros. Traffic report. Oh, look, we've had 37 sight. How come somebody has got a Type 9? I suspect this is some of this is manufactured. Either that or this is developers messing around because I hear the Type 9 is a lot more expensive. But uh, I did look and the Eagle is like 16,000 and I made 16,000 in one run from the bulletin board. Now, bulletin board, yes, we have. Well, what do we have here? We've got lots of options. So, what's this one? Feeding the fuel of war. If I can take, pro wait, if I can acquire progenitor cells and return to Dahan 3, I can make 14,764, which is actually pretty sweet. So, this is like the, uh, this is the missions that we have, right? Where it's like, uh, they wanted to acquire a specific thing. Well, now you can accept the mission, so you're guaranteed that the mission is there when you return. So, if you can find a place nearby that sells robotics, you can bring it in for serious profit. Uh, lithium, then of course you have the usual haulers, where it's like, carry random things to various locations. But, um, yeah, let's go and take a look. Well, okay, so outfitting we can actually do some outfitting at these stations, at these outposts. They don't have shipyards, they don't have straight up commodity markets, but they do have bulletin boards. And you can get your repairs and everything done here as well. Of course we're taking forever to roll into this. Seems to me the graphics are again slightly, I don't know if they're sharper or whatever, but they certainly modified the feel. Ah oh yes, my good old loner lasers. Do we have anything that we can fit? Oh look, we have cargo scanners, chaff launchers, 
cargo scanners cost 364,000. I'm thinking that these are the PvP items. <laughs> or, wait a second. Oh, this is an E class? Aha, rating E, rating H. I'm not sure what the rating system is, but uh, no doubt you can find out about that on the website right now. I'm obviously just learning this game because literally I got home and the game had just launched, so I'm just trying to figure things out. You can now upgrade individual parts, although I haven't seen any place that sells this, including frame shift drive, life support, power distribution, fuel tank, cargo rack. Presumably all of these will be upgradable on your quest to build an iron ass. Coming back, we have Universal Cartographics, who will sell you data on various star systems. Most of these, uh, of course, you can find out from the galaxy map. The galaxy map is, you can find on this left panel here, galaxy map. And let's actually go and spend a fair bit of time looking at it. So, zooming out. You can now see the area of, or the volume of space which you can now live in. It is a kind of pill-shaped object, it's not a sphere, because the reason is, this is over on the right, this is explored space, and they wanted to make exploration important. So out in this direction, this is all unexplored systems. And uh, I want to be careful, because sometimes I've, clip I've clicked out on these unexplored systems and had crashes. But in the middle you see all the places we've had for a while. We had 50 systems in the, the beta one. We had five systems in the first, you know, beta that was able, which allowed us to actually fly around from station to station. So this is now a hundred times better than we once had. There are real stars out here. We, oh, not Chara. Uh, we have Ursa Majoris. Uh, we have all these Ursa Majoris systems. And interestingly enough, we have 47 Ur Ursa Majoris, which is a refinery system right on the very edge of the sphere. And the interesting thing about this is that we know, according to observations, that there should be at least three planets around this class G-type star. This G-type star is interesting because it's very similar to our sun. And so having multiple planets, and I believe it's possible there could be an Earth-type planet, not that they've detected it, but they've realized that there is a zone of stability which could support Earth-sized planets in, the st in that stability zone. So people have actually beamed messages out to this. But, yeah, we only have a couple of relays set up here with uh, you know nothing else visible at this time. Coming back, let's actually come back and get closer. We have, we have, uh, da, 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 da. we have Dahan. So of course I can now view the Dahan system, and we see the Sadar. We see the various planets, and of course now there are multiple stations in many of these systems. I have to step out. Iranian system, the one where all the fighting is going on. Oh, wrong button. Let's get back to the galaxy map. Foolish me! Yes, Iranian system view. Population 450,000. This is a class K, a yellow-orange main sequence star. Although this is 11 billion years old, it still has some life left in it. Because it is lower than one solar mass. It has 0.68 solar masses. So. That should live, oh god, I don't know, like 30, 30 billion years? We have a couple of stations. We have Azaban Orbital, Eranin 4 Survey Station, and of course, Azaban City. And of course, all the planets are out there. The whole universe that we've known so far is much more, uh, has many, many more systems around it. We have Morgard there, Weird. Does Weird have anything in it? I haven't gone to half these places because I've literally loaded it up. There we go. Rich, high population stars, and we have a ton of stations here. And of course, you can go and uh, fly up to these. We now have uh, rings, which are going to be mineable, but not all of them. Are. Not all of them. Uh, I don't believe the technology is in the game just yet. Oh, there's Arcturus. Arcturus is a legit system. It's a real system, and of course, you can look at it. It is a K-type star, 
which has just over one solar masses. It's about, it's very, very young actually. Six, oh no, 6,000 million years actually. No, this one's getting towards the end of its life. Pardon me. But, uh, yeah, five stations in this system. Let's see what else we've got. Arcturus, I thought I saw. Beta Coma, Coma Bernices, Aganipte, Capella. And now, if we come out this way, can I, I guess I just click on the stars. Yes, Laland. No description. So, as we go further out in this direction, uh huh. Oh, nope. Exit. Come back. As we go further out in this direction, we should have less and less well explored stars. I'm going to click on this one. VP HIP that means it's just it's a it was one discovered by the Hipparchos catalog I believe system view system view shows three stars but nothing else we can go out and explore this of course there's Ashinar down there but Ashinar is out of my scope therefore I can't find anything yeah, so the system has hugely expanded, leaving us lots to see. And I haven't even... I've not gone very far at this time, because I'm just trying to get my heads around the new updates. Okay, so let's actually go to Starport Services and we'll just accept one of these missions. We've been shot at, but I think we can... Uh, I think we can perhaps earn some more money. We certainly can't carry anything. Look at this! Closers with a proven track record wanted for heavy duty hijinks. This is a lot of cash. Uh, cargo animal meat. We this is it, Commander. Time to make some serious money. Business is booming, which means I need you to get out there. Find getting me twenty nine canisters. Not going to work for me. Gold purchased. So we need to find some gold. Where can we get gold from? Well. We have an hour to find it, but I don't think we're going to look for it. Famish citizens, animal meat. Uh, trustworthy haulers. Oh, that's pretty easy. Culpepper port is out of range. Surgical strikes required. Means we have to go out and kill the notorious freebooter. There's been a th constant thorn in the side of certain associates, yes, so you can go out and find someone. So it's serious money to be made these days. And that serious money does kind of offset the fact that they had a complete reset. Okay, I think this is what we're going to do. Citizens, ship and you, we're basically going to... Our agents in Erenin have asked us to deliver some sort of, I don't know, propaganda. So we're going to take it over there. It's uh, just a standard courier mission. Once we're there, we can do some more trading and everything. But, you know, I haven't really got time to cover everything. But they have added a ton of other stuff in this. Let's just point our spacecraft. So we set... We have the local system still available through this UI. And, of course, you can use the gal galactic map to look further afield but yeah i mean there's a uh, the whole scanning system for unexplored uh content is huge difference uh we now also have the ability to track ai spacecraft so you can see the ai ships in super cruise and i'm guessing that they're going to be adding in interdiction but that may not actually be there yet pilot rankings are in there so you can Ship see whether you're elite yet. Not. You're not going to be elite. You're going to start out as harmless. Let's fly away from this station just for a little. Take a look around the interior. This looks like a rather icy world a long way from the sun. Okay, yeah, turn around. There seems to be quite a few people here despite being in a backwater. Off to Iran and we go. So yeah, the scanner, if you look when I was flying in Super Cruise, you could actually see the scanner picking up the celestial bodies and the other spacecraft. When you fly out of station, you will see drive Super charge. Cruise drive signatures that you can... I guess there's a way to scan and then chase after these spacecraft to figure out where they are. There's a new station type in the Ocelus as well. We have mine launchers, proximity mines. There's different types of asteroids. There's metal, rock, ice. Um, yeah, and the patch notes also make reference to allowing loan a loan system if you run out of money and you need to buy insurance replacements. I think the idea is that if you have if you don't have enough cash 
and you lose your ship, then you can end up having negative wallet balance, basically. Because it would really suck to be flying a spacecraft filled with everything you own and then lose it and then have absolutely no option but to go back to a Sidewinder. So I, I think that's a good way, especially considering that everyone has have it, is having their money reset. So there it says that we need to deliver the Federation papers and if we highlight it, it tells us we have to go to Azaban City. A place we all know and love and have smuggled battle weapons into on many occasion. And as I get interdicted, I think it's time for me to say farewell. I will see you in the Elite Universe. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.